Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fisher. Welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And the topic for today is tropical systems versus non-tropical systems. And it turns out, as you might expect, that there are some big differences between the two. All right, so we're not going to be able to get into all of the details here, but at least want to get across some of the basics. Here are some things to consider about uh, our topic. Uh, first of all, vorticity or spin in the atmosphere comes about in three ways, okay? Weather systems produce two of the three. And we've talked about this on earlier bonus weather videos where you have a curvature in the flow, okay? So that creates vorticity. Then you actually have shear where if you think about a hypothetical telephone pole that's suspended just above the ground and the wind is stronger at the top of the pole than it is at the bottom, then it's going to start to rotate like this, okay? So you get vorticity that way by changes in wind speed and uh, over a, a given distance. And, and that axis of rotation can actually be vertical, it can be horizontal, it can be all sorts of different things. But the Earth's rotation also contributes vorticity as well. Now, the, the equation for planetary vorticity, or the Earth's vorticity, is 2 omega sine phi, okay? Now, omega is the rate of rotation of the Earth, the rate at which it's excuse me, rate at which it spins, and phi is the latitude, okay? So at the equator, the latitude is zero. At the North Pole, it's 90. Uh, at, our, at the RDU airport, I think it's about 35.9 degrees, okay? Now, if you remember back to your trigonometry days, the sine of zero degrees is zero, okay? So it doesn't matter how fast the Earth is spinning at the equator, it, anything times zero is zero. So the Earth contributes no vorticity at all at the equator, okay? Now, here are some additional things to consider. Systems in the tropics are typically weak to start with, okay? Obviously, once a tropical storm or a hurricane forms, they're strong. But to start with, in general, most of the systems in the tropics are weak. So they need help from the Earth's rotation to be able to get going. And they don't get much of that near the equator, okay? So you will rarely, if ever, see a tropical system develop within five degrees latitude, either north or south of the equator. No tropical system, at least to my knowledge, has ever crossed the equator, but a few have developed south of five degrees north latitude and north of five degrees south latitude, but it's a very, very rare occurrence, okay? So on the left here, don't worry about the one on the right, but on the left, this is a map of the Earth, and these are lines of latitude, okay? So this is the equator, this is 15 degrees north, 30 degrees north, and then 45 and 60, and all the latitude lines are bunched together here at the top, so you can't really see them. But I drew in red lines here for 5 degrees north and 5 degrees south. So basically, this is the no man's land in here that tropical systems rarely, if ever, develop, okay? And there is that no man's land there. Now. The other thing about tropical systems is they are what we call warm core, where the warmest air in the system is right smack dab in the middle of it in the eye. This is actually a, a chart or a diagram, if you will, that indicates uh, temperature anomalies in a tropical system. Now, the biggest temperature anomalies are actually aloft, okay, uh, up here in the higher part of the storm, but if you look at the axis of this, this is right where the eye is, right in the middle, and that's where the warmest air is. Tropical systems, again, are considered warm core. These are surfaces of constant pressure. And remember how we talked about how the distance between two surfaces of constant pressure is proportional to the temperature of the layer between them? So if you look at this here, these lines are farthest apart right in the middle of the storm, okay? So this is why we talk about it as a warm core system, there is sinking motion going on in the eye of the hurricane, and that sinking motion produces warming and also lower pressure, okay? And so right in the eye, that's where the warmest air is, that's where the air is sinking, and so this is where the system, or how the system becomes warm core. Now, even more things to consider. Let's talk about mid-latitude systems. They are tilted, okay? They form along zones of temperature contrast or fronts. And a lot of times the North Carolina coast, especially in the winter time, is a great breeding ground for low pressure areas. Why? Because the Gulf Stream is just offshore. It is warming the air just above it. And so even in January, the water temperatures are near 70 in the Gulf Stream. 
And then if we have an outbreak of cold air, then the temperatures over land are much, much colder. And so we set up a natural front. In fact, there's a term for that called frontogenesis. You think about Genesis, first book of the Bible, first initial start, okay? So frontogenesis means the beginning of a front. And then if you get an upper level system to come along and interact with that front, then you can get a huge cyclone and then it goes up and buries Baltimore, Washington, Philly, New York, and Boston with heavy snow. And that's why they don't like us all that much up in those parts of the country because we are the beginning of all their trouble. Okay, upper level divergence ahead of the wave aloft, the upper level system, creates area of pressure falls over the cyclone. Now, how does that upper level divergence cause pressure falls? In general, the winds are gonna be much stronger in the upper levels of the atmosphere than they are toward the ground, okay? So if you are removing more mass up here than you are bringing in at the bottom, then you are removing mass and the pressure is going to drop, okay? But you want that area to be over top of the low pressure area at the ground, which means that the wave aloft has to be to your west, okay? So because all the divergence occurs ahead of the wave. And then once the wave passes, then it's exactly the opposite. Now, eventually the cyclone migrates to a position underneath the wave aloft. Then the upper level divergence is no longer over the surface area of low pressure. The system is then vertically stacked. And if the air is not diverging aloft, but it's all coming together at the ground, then you're accumulating mass and the pressure starts to go up and the system begins to weaken. And uh, that's basically the life cycle of a mid-latitude cyclone. So this is a very poor man's representation here, but these again are lines of constant pressure or constant pressure surfaces. But notice here that the dip in the upper atmosphere is here, and then farther down it's here, and then at the surface it's here. So the system is tilted off to the west like this. And remember, again, the closer those surfaces of constant pressure are to each other, the colder the air is. So the coldest air is to the west of the low pressure area at the surface, okay? Which sort of makes sense because if you think about it, this area up in here is low pressure and there's gonna be a counterclockwise flow around that. So it's going to bring colder air in on the west side of that circulation and it's gonna bring warm air up to the east side of that circulation. And so this is the way a mid-latitude system starts. It's vertically tilted and then eventually the area of low pressure near the surface begins to migrate underneath the upper level system and then the system again becomes vertically stacked and you no longer have divergence over the low, the pressure starts to uh, accumulate or arise, and then the system begins to weaken. So the system tilts with height, and the pressure falls due to the upper level divergence. Okay, does that make any sense at all? I hope so. <laughs> so that is bonus weather video uh, number two for this week. Hope that made some sense. Uh, the daily weather update will be posted very shortly as well. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Again, if there's any severe weather threat or warnings issued on Sunday, I'll keep you updated with frequent updates as those warnings are issued, if they're issued. It's still some uncertainty about that. But if I don't talk to you over the weekend at all, and that would be good news because that would mean there would be no severe weather, I will talk to you again on Monday, God willing, okay? So y'all have a great weekend and we'll talk to you again at some point. <laughs> Take care.